Hello, this is uh, Jeffrey Fox. I'm going to talk to you today about the engineered nanobio node. This is an overview co covering the technical components of this project, not the outreach and education and diversity components. And in that sense, it is discussing what applications we have on NanoHub and um, what they're doing. Okay, let's go. Here we have the major players on the nanobiotechnical team, uh, faculty and staff. Uh, with this, of course, uh, also includes lots of wonderful students who are absolutely critical for progress. And I apologize for not mentioning all those names. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Fox. My expertise is uh, some mixture of uh, data analytics, cyber infrastructure, parallel computing, computational physics, and high performance computing. Vikram Judeo is. Um, an expert on soft matter at nanoscales and the simulation of this material and charged soft matter. Paul Macklin, who uh, is uh, in the uh, macro unit, uh, Vikram was in the uh, nano unit, of course. He does computational models for multicellular systems, large scale, um, with an emphasis on cancer modeling and simulation. Uh, James Glazier does the micro, leads the micro scale, and his expertise is developmental biology and multicellular networks again, and the simulation he developed a famous code, CompuCell 3D, which is used in our project. Trevor Douglas is in chemistry, biomimetic materials design, and he also has a significant emphasis on a virus nanoparticle assembly. Andy Samoji works in the uh, Micro unit, and he does a new novel model ways of modeling, and he's a very uh, talented software developer, taking the developing both the ideas and the software realization. Judy Chu is in data analytics and uh, works as an expert on the Apache software engineering model. Elif Garifidelis uh, does uh, neuroscience or neuroengineering. And he had, for this particular project, his expertise is in software community building and scientific visualization, the package Fury. Josh Ballard comes from a very strong nano technology and quantum computing background and is the project manager for this uh, nano bio. Uh, Supon uh, Kumrabhirvagavi is in software engineering, managing all those GitHubs we have. Thank you. So here's our rationale. Um, it's pretty difficult to predict uh, what, how to use nanotechnology and to study it because it's very multi-scale. Uh, you have all these different scales from the basic uh, nanoparticles up right up to uh, people, through cells and parts of people and things like that. And we need to understand how the nanotechnology, the smaller systems interact with biological systems at the, these different um, levels. And um, we're using NanoHub to uh, deploy our work because this has already shown itself to be successful in, in getting nano research and education out to the people. And uh, so we're supporting the nanobio community by working with the nanohub people to bring things to the, to the outside world. And this interaction with the community drives nanohub. And we respect uh, diversity and we have a culture of inclusion. Here is a good link on nanohub describing all of our activities. Okay, so this. Uh, is a very straightforward diagram. It um, shows we have a nanobio node, that's us. There's a nanofacturing node, it's doing nanotechnology for manufacturing at Illinois. And there's a central activity at Purdue, which uh, does a lot of um, outreach, because it already has, um, you know, I don't know, over almost 10, more than 10 times as many things to uh, maybe. Uh, 20 times as much stuff as we do already from previous work over the last 20 years. And it has, it runs all the system hardware and software for the deployment. 
and that's called the NCN. <clears throat> um, so here it shows these linkages. Uh, we also work with the Intelligence uh, Systems Engineering Department at IU, um, we are the uh, IT Department at IU, and that supports the application development from NanoBio to uh, NCN. All right, so here is a, a picture and a little more detail. We have um, three main um, modeling uh, groups, Nano headed by Vikram Jadeo, um, micro, which goes from nano to cell level, headed by James Glazier and Andy Samoji, and macro, headed by Paul Macklin, going from cellular to tissue. Then we have some cross cutting activities high performance computing, optimization, and general integration. That's me. Uh, data analysis and analytics, Judy Chu, and visualization and image processing, uh, LF Garifalidis. And we also, it's important to make certain that whatever simulations we produce uh, satisfy, uh, agree with experiment, and also are motivated by what experimentalists want. And we have a collaboration with Trevor Douglas, who's in the chemistry department at Indiana University, on the testing and validation of models and simulations. And we um, always use high performance computing when appropriate. And we're gradually adding more and more artificial intelligence or machine learning to support things. There's a picture of it all over here. We start at the smaller scales with nano, then micro, then macro. We have the experimental validation spanning these scales, although it's mainly at the nano level because that's a much more uh, easier to specify level. And then we have another cross cutting activity the HPC and data analysis. All right, so here are some <coughs> uh, motivations. Um, here we have a breast tu tissue, tumor tissue, which has been stained. And we need to understand how these cells, uh, in particular the breast cancer cells, interact with each other and uh, how the cells um, and the defects in the cells evolve from cell to cell and throughout tissues. And uh, this is obviously very important for both aging and disease. This whole area, of course, is being revolutionized also by machine learning, which isn't really doing what we're doing. We're doing the modeling. The machine, there's a whole branch of machine learning, which is to interpret the images by understanding patterns uh, from the deep learning technology. All right, so <clears throat> we need to know how things could go across cell boundaries and um, and how the, the actual topo the structure of the cell uh, changes and how it interacts with its environment and how it actually, if you s it's launch uh, nanoparticles at it, how they get through the cells and things like that. So that's another important aspect of what we try to uh, motivating us. And uh, here's another example. We need to know how the nanoparticles actually move around in tissues. Do they disperse or do they actually get acted on or do they actually go to a certain type of cell or not? And this is a very complicated um, multi-scale problem. And we try to, uh, we don't obviously not addressing all of these issues, but we're trying to address some key few um, um, problems across all scales. And hopefully making important contributions. And as I say, we're trying to get the input from the community to see what to do. Uh, here's another picture of this multi scale. <coughs> Showing how you go from the ion level in the nano confined, how you can actually study shapes, and then you can actually assemble them um, to uh, into clusters interfacing with cells, and this goes from uh, around a nanometer up to 
a thousand nanometers, a micrometer, and then we come from this is in all in the nano unit. Then we come down to the micro unit, uh, which is the nanoparticle cell simulator, uh, where they're interact nanoparticles are interacting with cells, and then we have the uh, macro level, which just has one and typically lots of cells interacting with each other. And then the whole thing ends up by building virtual and understanding virtual tissues and the interaction of nanoparticles in those tissues. And um, we have the uh, what we call engineered precision health, where this thing allow these computer simulations allow you to make precision decisions about how to decisions how to use nanoparticles for particular patients. All right, thank you very much. All right, in this uh, last two slides, which um, we, we just finished the general discussion from a technical point of view, here are some logistic issues. This one shows the number of users of our tool. Uh, we have between 15 and 20 tools at the moment. Uh, that happens to be the largest used tools is one of the earliest, essentially the earliest. This is this gray one here has over 100 users. And then we have all the other tools plotted, has showing how they grow with time. These are cumulative users. And here we have the end of December 2012. Um, we have over five, uh, over 600 total users. But here we only look at the user per tool. Okay. Um, here's another part of the logistics we have. Everybody uses GitHub in this project. We have 17 actually distinct GitHubs we use, which we federate using standard GitHub technology into this master GitHub here. And here are some um, little um, snippets from each of the main several different GitHubs. These are all from the, the well, this one is macro, here is a nano. No, that's another macro, here is a nano. Uh, here is a micro, a micro, here is a uh, visualization, and here is some data analysis ones. All right, so they all, all these different GitHubs cover different aspects of the problem. And we use uniform software engineering methods with some idiosyncrasies for things that are not, they achieve that we have, we have goals for software engineering, but we don't require particular implementations. All right, so that's the end of the overview.